Hey guys, welcome back to Total Tech. In today's video, I'm gonna show you how you can access the camera, microphone, and location of any device that's connected to the internet. Right from the comfort of your own laptop or PC, you'll be able to access the location, camera, and microphone of any device that has a network connection. And the best part about this is, it's totally free. If you guys enjoy this content, I would really appreciate it if you would like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on any future videos. And as always, if you have any questions or need any help, please leave me a message in the comments below and I will get back to you. Now, let's jump right into it. The main tool we will be using in this video is called Stormbreaker. In a previous video, I covered how to track devices without the use of tools, but that method actually required a one-time payment. This method, however, is much faster, easier, and does not require any payment at all. It will also allow us access to the camera and microphone of the target device. First, from the GitHub repo, we're going to scroll up and hit the green icon to copy the link. Then we're going to go to our terminal and navigate to the OPT directory. This is where I like to install optional programs, hence OPT. After that, we're going to clone or download this tool by typing git clone and pasting the link that we just copied. Next, hit enter to download it. Once downloaded, we can type ls to list all the files and directories. As you can see, the tool downloaded is in fact Stormbreaker. We can navigate to its directory again using the cd command. And if we list in here, you'll see we have an installation script that will install the tool for us. But before running this installation script, we need to install a few required packages that the program uses. I'm going to type app update to update the sources from which we can download the packages. Once this completes, I'm going to clear the screen and type app install to install the required packages. The packages are Python 3 request, Python 3 colorama, and Python 3 psutil. These packages are normally pre-installed in our system, so we'll hit enter to check. As you can see, the packages are already installed in our system. However, if this were not the case, then we would have just proceeded with the installation. Next, we're going to clear the screen. As you can see, I'm still in the OPT Stormbreaker path. I'm going to run ls again so you can see that I still have my installation script, and then we will run a bash install.sh in order to run it. The reason we're using bash is because this is a shell script, and the bash command is how you run them in Linux. After it finishes installing the packages, it's going to show us this warning, but don't worry, the program will still work. So I'm going to clear the screen, and we're going to run the program by typing python3 st.py. The reason we're using Python 3 is because the program is written in Python 3 and the main application file is st.py. I'm going to hit enter and as you can see, it works with no issues at all. It's giving us this link to the admin panel. This is the panel that we're going to use in order to track the people and see their location. It's also telling us to use a program called Invroc on port 2525 in order to allow people to access this link. We do however have a slight issue. Right now, this program is only running on our local computer, which means it will only work within our network, and we will not be able to use this tool outside of our current network, which is, of course, what we need to do. Therefore, we're going to use a program called Ingrock in order to allow us to use this tool on any computer or any device in the world, regardless of where they are located. In order to fix this issue, we're going to go back to our browser and download Ingrock. The URL we'll be using is ingrock.com slash downloads. We're going to choose Linux because that's the operating system we're using, and then we're going to click APT. We will install Ingrock through its APT repository. Click the copy button to copy the commands to install Ingrock in our Kali operating system. Let's go back to our terminal. I'm going to split the screen and paste the command that we just copied. The command is very simple. We are adding the ingrock package to our Kali system so that we can automatically download and install ingrock. I'm going to hit enter and the command starts executing. The app repository is updated and ingrock is installed automatically. So now we can type ingrock in our terminal in order to use the program. But before we use this program, we have to create an account with this service here. Creating an account is really easy and just like signing up for any other service on the internet. I already have an account, so I'm just going to log in here. Once logged in, if you scroll down, you'll see step two telling you that you have to connect your account. So basically, you'll have to execute this command in your Kali system in order to link your Kali to Ingrock, and that way your Kali machine can receive traffic from the internet. This is all done using the authentication token that is already populated here in the command. All you have to do is copy this command and execute it in your terminal. I'm going to clear the screen, execute the command, and perfect. 
As you can see, the result is telling you that the authentication token is saved to this file, meaning that my Kali machine is now linked with the account that we logged in as. Now we can go ahead and use the tool on this computer. Stormbreaker is already telling us how to use this tool. You have to execute this command. You can simply copy the command and paste it here. So basically, we're using Ingrock to expose a service that's running on port 2525 on HTTP. And that service happens to be this service right here, Stormbreaker. I'm gonna hit enter and perfect. It's running with no issues at all. It's also giving us the forwarding information. So this link right here is gonna to forward to this link right here. And this link right here is the same link that Stormbreaker is running on. Now we can forget about this link, which again is only local and only available within our current network. And we will begin using this link instead. Always make sure to use this link because unlike the previous link, our new link will work from anywhere in the world, regardless of location. It's a really powerful tool. Next, I'm gonna copy the new link and open a new tab in Firefox. It's gonna ask us to log in as admin. Therefore, the username will be admin and the password is also admin. This is our admin control panel. From here, we have all the links that we need to share with the targets that we want to track. We will also be able to get the information about the targets and their location, all from within this page. So needless to say, you should never share this link with anyone. You should only use this link yourself in order to manage and access the people that you are tracking. These are the links that we're gonna to send to our targets. Each one of these links loads a different website and these websites will allow us access to the location of the target person as well as their camera and their microphone. For example, this one here is a camera template which will gain access to the target's camera. This one is a microphone template and this one is a template for a service called Near You which will allow you to access the people around you. This is what we'll use in our social engineering scenario and once the target uses it, we're going to get their location. Now I know this part of the link might look a bit suspicious, but there are several ways to get around this. The best way is to install this tool into a cloud server and link it to a domain name. It needs to be something convincing like peoplenearme.com. This way you'll be able to access these pages by simply going to your domain instead of these links, which might look a little suspicious. We're gonna start with the Near You link on this computer as it's one of my favorites. And then we're gonna load the weather link onto a mobile phone. Like I said, this technique will work on both cell phones and on computers. Next, we're gonna copy this link. Go to the target computer and paste it here. As you can see, you get a cool looking website pretending to be a service that finds people around you. You're gonna to have to social engineer the target to make it sound appealing so that they want to use it. If the target clicks continue, the web browser is gonna ask them for permission to use the location. However, even if they deny this, if we go back to our page, you'll see that we already have their IP address, which we can use to get their approximate location. We will also know their operating system, the browser, and a lot of other information that's useful for other social engineering scenarios. However, if the target does click on allow in order to use the service, we can go back to our control panel, and as you can see, we now have a Google Map link that we can use to get an exact location of the target device. So that's pretty cool. Now let me show you the other example from a mobile phone. We're gonna go with the weather template here. This is actually one of my favorites. Now we're gonna copy this link. I'm gonna go ahead and load it from the web browser in my mobile phone. Like I said earlier, if we go down here, you can see the IP address, which again, is enough to get an approximate location of the target's whereabouts. We can also see the operating system, the version, the browser they're using, as well as other useful information. If the user clicks on change location in order to get accurate weather readings for their location, they'll be asked to give permissions for the GPS and they click on allow, we will again get a Google Maps link, which will again give the exact location of the target device. Lastly, let's have a look at the first example here, which will allow us to access the camera of the target. First, I'm gonna copy the link. Go to your browser and paste it here. Again, simply loading this is gonna give you the basic information that we saw earlier, including the IP address. As you can see, we're starting to get notifications of image files being saved to this location. We can now click on these files to see what's inside. And there we have it. The camera has taken a picture of our target and saved it for us to view. And I must say, he's pretty handsome. While these techniques are scary and could be potentially misused under the wrong circumstances, the reason I showed you this is so that you can know how to better protect yourself and your loved ones from digital attacks. 
If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on any future content. And again, if you have any questions, please leave me a message in the comments below because I'd love to hear from you. Thanks for stopping by, and I'll see you in the next video.